Welcome to the Quick Start Video Guide for establishing a link to the ISP over an ISDN channel. The objective of this video is to set up a dial on demand routing link to the ISP over the ISDN channel. The configuration steps are creating a dialer list to define interesting traffic, that is, the traffic which triggers connection to the dial-up link. Set up the BRI interface in PPP encapsulation mode and also establish other attributes such as the idle timeout, configuring a default static route with, B with the BRI interface as gateway for all traffic, verify DDR by pinging ISP's router and also using tracer route to validate the route being used to access google.com. The network can be visualized with the current slide. We have a single Okapi router connecting to the ISP represented by a network cloud. The IP address will be provided by the ISP and is hence mentioned as being negotiated in the diagram. Logging into Router A, we begin by defining a dialer list with ID 1. At this point, we have full control or flexibility to define interesting traffic. We can define traffic as per the protocol. Some of the available pro protocols are IP, TCP, UDP, FTDI. Out of the aforementioned, we use the IP protocol. As would be obvious from the video, for a single protocol, one can permit complete access to it or fully rec restrict the access. Additionally, one can also have a tighter control over the access to this protocol by using access list. In this presentation, we are giving full access to the IP protocol. Thus, the dialer list here allows any data traffic over IP. This implies that if any IP packet reaches a PRI interface, it will trigger the connection to the ISP. Next, we configure the BRI interface. First, we define the encapsulation which in our case is PPP or the point-to-point -point protocol. Then, we configure the dialer string which is the number to be dialed for establishing PPP link. In our case, this happens to be the ISP number. After that, we set the idle timer for the connection to be 60 seconds. This implies that if the link is idle for more than 60 seconds, it will become dormant. Next, we apply a dialer list 1 to define demand on this interface by running dialer group command. To accept any IP address, being provided by our ISP during negotiation, we need to execute IPCP except local. From this, it should also be evident that the public IP to the BRI interface is provided by the ISP and not chosen randomly. And finally, to bring the interface up, we execute no shut command. We have configured router in DDR mode by the above configurations and there is no IP traffic at the interface. Clearly, till this point, it has not initiated any link with the pair. The same can be verified by the show interface command. From the output, one can discern that our interface is configured 
with default IP addresses. Till now, we have established that the incumbent router should dial the ISP only when IP traffic is sensed on the BRI interface. However, we require a mechanism to send the traffic to this interface. This is done by configuring a default route, which says any kind of traffic should be forwarded to interface BRI 0. Routes can be verified by using the show IP route command. Now, if we ping google.com, the traffic will be forwarded to BRI0. As soon as the router sees the IP packets on the BRI interface, it triggers a connection to the ISP. At this juncture, our router dials the number specified for the ISP previously, that is 172.587 and establishes a PPP link with the ISP. The same can be verified by the show interface command. We can see that the interface has now received a public IP from the ISP which verifies its connectivity with it. Our IP 202.56.226.137 and pairs IP 202.56 dot two one five dot two. We can now ping the ISP. We can also use trace route to check the route to google.com. One can see that the traffic is routed through the ISP. At this note, we also conclude our presentation.